Biden administration is facing pressure to help secure the release of a Princeton doctoral student being held hostage in the Middle East. There was a protest outside the White House on Monday as President Biden was meeting with the Iraqi prime minister. The group was trying to bring attention to the kidnapping of 37-year-old Elizabeth Surkov. She's a dual Israeli-Russian citizen who was studying in Baghdad last year when she was taken by a terrorist group who's backed by the Iranian government. Before his meeting with the prime minister on Monday, the State Department said President Biden would raise the issue with the Iraqi leader. And of course, we will be following this story. Over one decade ago, American freelance journalist James Foley was covering the civil war in Syria when he was kidnapped by ISIS. He was held captive for two years, then executed by the terrorist group on camera in 2014. Seven years later, his mother, Diane Foley, traveled to a Virginia courthouse to speak with one of his, her son's imprisoned captors and to find answers. She has a new book on those meetings entitled American Mother, and she joins us now. We want to thank you very much for uh, coming on the show this morning. Um, let us know what, what you learned in some of those meetings. I know it, it's all in the book, and, and it's, it's a journey for you even after your son's death, that is incredibly compelling. Um, give us a sense of, of parts of that journey. I, uh, well, good morning to you both. It's good to um, be with you again. Last time I saw you was shortly after Jim was killed. So I thank yeah. you for your time. No, it was, it was necessary to talk to Alexander Cody for me because Jim would have. Jim was always interested mm -hmm. in the underdog and folks that um, might um, be disenfranchised. And I think Alexander, as a young immigrant without a dad, you know, um, was bullied and Jim would have wanted to hear him out. So I, I felt it was necessary to go speak to him. Um, and I, I think we have to listen and find ways to talk to those we don't agree with. Um, so that was a lot of the reason. Plus, I wanted to tell him about Jim. I wanted him to know who Jim was as a person. Diane, so good morning. It's Willie like Geis. This extra extraordinary book. Um, um, so you spent three days uh, at Virginia Courthouse. Yes. Uh, talking with this man, which I'm sure took a lot to sit down and, and look him in the eye and find some humanity and some mercy even. Um, can you take us inside the conversations? What was it like on a human level? Well, to be honest, I had to I, I had to pray to just be really present and see him as the young man that he is, um, really the same age as one of our younger sons, who's obviously made some awful choices, um, you know, and it's important that he be held accountable. But by the same token, um, he also has lost his freedom and probably ability to ever see his family or country again. So the whole experience was sad, but healing in the sense that uh, he heard me, and I feel that I, I heard him. Um, and he did express quite a bit of remorse, to be honest. Diane Elise Jordan here. Your empathy and your courage has just been incredible and is so inspiring. And, you know, the book, I'm so excited to read. But how much in the book do you talk about what you did to change how American hostages are rescued by the American government, because part of the frustration with your son's struggle was that the U.S. government really did not step up to the plate, and they even harmed your efforts and threatened you with prosecution if you and your husband pursued outside action. So you have changed. Now there's a hostage coordinator. So many rescues have been possible. So many hostages have been released. How did, just can you talk about how you, how you did that? 
Well, that is Jim's legacy, and that does give me um, joy in many ways. Um, when Jim was taken in 2012 through 2014, there was no U.S. hostage enterprise. There was no one to help me. So that was part of the reason I was sent in circles, and um, people didn't know. Our government did not know what to do with me, actually. Um, and I was ignorant of our policy of non engagement with captors, um, because obviously if you don't engage at all, um, the captors will get rid of the uh, hostages and kill them. And that's what happened with Jim, um, Kayla Mueller, Peter Kasich, and Stephen Sotloff in 2014. So I was angry. I felt as a country we could do much better. And thanks to many good people, we have. We now have a U.S. hostage enterprise with dedicated government officials who brought home more than 100 U.S. nationals, people who were targeted like Jim, free of any crime, I'm free of, you know, had not committed any crime at all, but were targeted because they were Americans, and more than 100 have been brought home. But it's still a huge national security threat in, in a all honesty. It's a challenge to us because Americans are targeted when we travel internationally. We truly are. The book, the book is titled American Mother, and it is available now. Diane Foley, thank you very much uh, thank you for, for writing this time. book and for coming on the show this morning. You can find more information by clicking on jamesfoleyfoundation.org. And once again,